Hello, Namaste. I welcome you all to the 23rd session of Guru Bodha with our beloved Dr. M.B. Guraja sir. I cordially welcome Dr. M.B. Guraja sir to this class. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Janardhan. Uh, Dr. M.B. Guraja sir is an Ayurveda professor in Babuji Ayurveda Medical College, Shumoga with Ireland BAMS. And he is also a practitioner and he has his Ayurveda center, Davala Pentacare Ayurveda Treated Treatment Center in Shumoga, Karnataka and Davala Ayurveda Clinic in the city of Shumoga. He can be uh, consulted for uh, uh, guidelines for case-based discussion and also for personal health, easyayurveda.com slash guru raja. And this session is both question and answer type and also discussion type. And uh, coming to the topic of today, so we are going to discuss one of the, one of the most important aristas or fermented liquids, which is very commonly used, called as abhyarista. Uh, it is useful in piles, hemorrhoids, release bloating, constipation. We will uh, get this uh, information and more about its uses and all from Dr. Guraja himself. Before that, uh, Haritaki, or uh, one among the Trifula, is its main ingredient and it contains uh, ricins or draksha, vidanga, maduka made into kashayam and jaggery and it contains gokshura, trivrat, coriander, uh, dhataki which is the fermenting agent, indravaruni, shunti, ginger and danti, these are you know, sort of main ingredients. So, Guruja sir, can you please take us through this her uh, basic introduction and you know how to use, where to use, and, and all. Abhyarista is one of the important uh, preparation, usually pointed towards controlling the apanavata or rectifying or modifying the apanavata. For that purpose, it is extensively used, and of course, it is one of the important ingredient in uh, preparation. In case of uh, hemorrhoids, it's widely used. It contains uh, basically Haritaki to a large extent followed by Draksha. If you observe that Haritaki is Ruksha whereas Draksha is Snigdha. Quite opposite but they are grouped together. Similarly, entire uh, contents if you observe there, it is having more sharp drugs like Indravaruni and it also contains a sharp drug like Trivrat or even Danti. But when you compare to the quantum of Haritaki present in that, it is almost 4.8 kgs. So when compared to that, it is just 96 grams these drugs are. But these drugs are very potent drugs. That's why 96 grams also can do wonder. But usually single drug acting in a situation when same drugs are combined together to form a yoga and yoga is given in a condition acts in a different way and Haritaki being one of the versatile drug it is being used in a different set of uh, the different type of anupanas or different modalities it is extensively used in a different manner for example Haritaki is said, uh, it is said that Charvitam Agnivardhanam if you just directly chew the Haritaki and eat it it will going to increase your Agni so, Charvitam Agnivardhanam. Then, similarly, it is a Veshita Malashodhini. If it is powdered and it is taken, definitely it is going to improve the Malashodhana. It helps in evacuation. Similarly, Svinna Sangrahiki. If you just boil it and eat it, then it acts as a, in a quite opposite di direction. It is, uh, does the Sangrahana type of thing. It avoids the stools to go out. It helps in uh, formation of these stools. So, a single drug in a different type of modalities or even different methodology if it be adopted to use then it behaves in a different manner. Similarly, if Haritaki is uh, very clearly as a drug of choice it is to be taken even in a different doses it behaves in a different manner. For example, Haritaki as a single drug we use it in case of ascites where it requires a stringent and very you know strong type of evacuation there also we use it and even Haritaki as a part of Tripala on a daily basis regularly we use it so in both the cases it is helpful so in that manner even though it contains uh, Danti, Trivrut and all those things it is not to be considered as a very you know, strong or very type of uh, pungent or it is a penetrating type of drug but it is a moderately designed with the help of other uh, drugs in that like it also contains dhataki is also there which is uh, kashaya pradhana 
and definitely it controls the twitching type of things which happens inside mochorasa is also there so it is there is a quite contrasting materials are also added to control one another in that sense it helps it in in a very typically the apanavata control for that purpose it is been used and designed in such a manner and of course in cases of uh, hemorrhoids or piles and even in case of fistula and even the bloating or indigestion in those condition vibandha and all those things even mutragata and such other things we use them uh, for the purpose of uh, controlling the we are the bringing the proper functioning of the apanavata so it's a basically a drug which controls the apanavata or modifies the functions of apanavata or facilitates the functions of the apanavata we can say thank you sir and interesting thing i also you know dug out this uh, charvita varade tagnam when harita ki fruit this is from bhav prakashan nikantu wherein he has mentioned like harita ki adi varga so he entire group of herbs are categorized based on the name of harita ki so, sort of he keeps it as a leader of all the herbs so when harita ki fruit is like chewed it improves agni and all and but when it's made into paste it acts like mala shodhini kind of detoxifies the colon uh, and what not and when it is fried it balances all the three doshas so the logic behind these statements is probably different set of phytochemicals getting released into our system when it is processed in different ways sir it may not be different uh, phytochemicals but it is we can say that why it behaves in that fashion is this drug is naturally by swabhava is a, designed in such a way that it is a vichitra pratyarabdha dravya so vichitra pratyarabdha dravyas are always like there they are unpredictable and their actions is very typical so that's the reason uh, with this vichitra pratyarabdha their arrangement of uh, things inside the you know, naturally when they are developed it is in such a way that if these things are been done like it is by charvitam means by chewing it thing in, uh, in a mouth and continuously then it definitely increases the agni but doesn't mean that here it is uh, releasing releasing out something uh, as a new chemical or something like a stimulant which can improves the salivation or it improves the gastric juices or digestive juices no it is not like that the whatever the chemical content is there it is there it cannot be changed only way is probably when we change the mode of its thing one who takes the leadership in the manifestation of a karma or the pharmacological action may be a different one so when we take it as a swinna sangrahani when we boil it and use it it acts as sangrahana then automatically its kashaya pradhanata that kashaya will come into uh, role and that takes the care of it when it is uh, charvitam vardayanta agni then maybe probably its ushna guna is taking the role peshita malashodini probably make its anulomana karma is leading the role so i like that every time whatever the uh, haritaki we are using in a different format definitely it helps in in the way it, it is to be and of course uh, it may not be because of simply some new chemical or some uh, phytoconstituent is released or no it's not like that it is the one of the you know, rasapanchakas which is present inside the drug which is uh, taking the leading role in manifestation of those karmas and thank you very much sir and uh, sticking to the ingredients it is so very dynamic and you know our ancient masters put so much thought into formulating so that each ingredients they themselves have their own uh, uh, you know contributing factors so sometimes like you told some ingredients are added probably to counter the you know excessive effects or to control the excessive effects of uh, other uh, herbs so basically uh, all the medicines ayurveda medicines can be categorized as either brahmana or say kashana category in western countries they call it as nourishing and detoxifying or cleansing probably this this medicine as a whole looking into these ingredients will fall into that uh, cleansing detoxification sort of category yeah we can we can say that we can say that we can keep it that way because even though these contains uh, draksha in it and it contains even dhanyaka and certain things but still overall effect of the yoga is that it is uh, uh, helping the uh, apanavayu to move in a uh, proper direction and do the functions of apanavata properly and helps in removal of the doshas from the body definitely and that is the reason 
uh, it is we can keep it it in the form of uh, in the category of a detoxifying uh, type of thing or depleting type of things if continuously if it is given it reduces the even the tissues also to some extent and uh, next question is that you know if we keep it in between say uh, we want to compare it to triflachurna trivrutlehiam castor oil a kind of standard um, medicines which are used for the purpose of virechana and ayurvedic churna does it have a comparable laxative or you know that purgative rechana action if so where we can fix it at which uh, level see among these uh, four or five yogas or combinations of drugs what you have been mentioned here i would like to keep castor oil at the top castor oil is a more a stronger purgative it is number 1 it should be given to patient who can withstand this castor oil because it cannot be given to weaker persons and a weaker person may develop a lot of cramping and as well as a number of more purgations will be there so i'll keep this castor oil at the top and next to that i keep it as trivrut lehya trivrut lehya is sukhavirechana but of course with a relatively dose dependent we can say so in that sense it can be as a sukhavirechana drivya regularly with a small doses if it is used then it can be used and it comes next to castor oil then comes Uh, to some extent it is avipatti kara churna at the third level for the purpose of rechana but and i'll keep the trifala in the last as the fourth one so among these things where shall i keep abhayarista if you want to ask me then it is preferably at number 4 or number 5 i'll keep it abhayarista because castor oil is comparably stronger in its action next is trivrut leha and afterward it is avipatti kachurna and just as a trifala powder as well as abhyarista somewhat at the same level they function it they remove the apanavata and makes the apanavata to do its function normally and as well as it won't cause any untoward side effects or cramps and such that things on the body so that and even they improve the agni particularly abhyarista so that is the reason uh, we it can be very mild and it can be used in a, in a various type of people so you you are assuring that uh, using abhyarista would not cause any twitching type of pain uh, as it is common with you know stronger per, uh, virechana herbs no it is not comparably such type of stronger herb but combination abhyarista is a comparably a better one and but of course uh, dose dependency is there and you cannot simply um, give a dose which is higher than to the person you need to calculate the agni roga vastha rogi bala and body weight and everything then accordingly you can fix the dosage somewhere between 15 ml or 10 10 ml to 15 ml or even to maximum 20 ml per dose so such type of doses will co- won't cause any a uh, problem and and the next question is one of the recommendation or indications traditionally given in the shlokas is udara so udara is grossly compared with ascites interchannel obstruction and many other conditions even uh, splenomegaly hepatomegaly are also considered sometimes so can it be a candidate for nitya virechana in case of uh, udara would you use that or see before uh, going directly uh, using this one we need to assess the condition properly first thing whether there is a intestinal obstruction we need to confirm it it is an obstruction there if there is an obstruction what is the thing which is causing the obstruction that has to be identified if it is just as a stool or it is a fecolith or something like that it is obstructing then we can go for uh, something which can be evacuated and we can go for uh, some purgation type of material even to the haritaki churna or even directly to the trivrut leha and something like that we can go for it but if it, the obstruction is due to some sort of growth inside then it is not recommended that we go for a virechana in those conditions by giving some medicines that is point number 1 point number 2 there are occasions where paralytic ileus there is one condition where a nerve supply to the intestines has been lost due to various reasons even then there will be constipation and or obstruction to the colon and these things will be there then also it should be very difficult to just simply give a thought that we can simply give medicine in such a way that it can be removed we need to 
assess those conditions very typically we need to assess those conditions and accordingly we need to give medicines if there is any growth inside take care not to use any such type of medicines which can be pushing the things it cannot be pushed because it's a growth over there it's obstructing it needs to be a surgical removal or something other than that or some other uh, interventions are required in case of uh, there is an obstruction which is simply due to uh, stools and such other things the hard stools maybe because of strong vibandha or something like that or even fecally then it is okay we can do it to some extent we can use these drugs which are maybe the stronger by comparing the strength of the person and all those things we can keep in those things in mind and we can use the drugs second thing very important is if there is ascites udara and once again there is a, a lot of uh, things to be understood in case of udara whether it is yakrutalya udara whether it is blihodara or whether it is any other sort of things so we need to understand if it is a enlargement of an organ which has induced and the form of an udara then nothing can be given if you don't if you give this one also it won't work it won't work in that sense so it needs to be very careful in handling these things so particularly in case of jato daka avastha we say it because of these things where there is udaka already present means in the peritoneal cavity there is a free fluid in that condition only we can go for the removal and there we can use anitya virechana dravyas and for the purpose of nitya virechana that there is a free peritoneal fluid is there in those condition instead of using abhyarista we have a better drugs to use it like dantyarista is there we can go for it then we have jalodhari ras is there we have another uh, jaypala containing drugs are there so there are many other yeah, modalities where you can use uh, more and even um, stronger comparatively even sukavirechana leha that is um, trivrit leha can be given in little bit higher doses on daily basis then that also will help so there are many other drugs other than abhyarista which can be used for the nitya virechana purpose from from your narration what i am trying uh, understanding is probably this not kind of a very strong uh, virechana action cannot be expected uh, with abhyarista right sir uh, it is not for the purpose of virechana as but it is only for the purpose of anuloma action which very clearly removes the pakwa and apakwa mala from the udara I mean in the gut at the costa and helps to evacuate the vata and controls the activity of apana vata that's the area, that is the entire uh, intended area and that is the area where it works yes, uh, uh, thank you and uh, bau prakasha advises to avoid haritaki in pregnancy uh, I, i mean i saw of, of all the references bau prakasha was probably the first one to mention uh, to avoid haritaki in pregnancy so can abhyarista be used during pregnancy or not sir see very simple haritaki is contraindicated by acharya bhava mishra and in case of pregnancy haritaki is contraindicated in many other conditions also haritaki is one of the important pathya very important drug is one one among the trifala first drug to be explained which has given lot of credit because it is one of the versatile drug which can be used in many things but still acharyas have also said that where it should not be given in any person who is lean and thin a person who has lost his dhatus tissue has been emaciated or vyadhi karshita marga karshita atapa karshita all these type of people should not be given haritaki similarly anything which is growing type of thing like in pregnancy or something like that in those condition this is a kashaya pradhana dravya and it is having a little bit of karshana effect so this type of drug is not indicated in case of pregnancy but if their acharya's intention of mentioning haritaki is alone haritaki should not be given to pregnant girl or a pregnant woman so that is the indication alone haritaki but we find lot of references where acharya's are very clearly indicated to use trifala churna and trifala also contains haritaki so it doesn't mean that any sense that kabhyarista uh, should be avoided no such rules if abhyarista if you feel it is good to the condition to the climatic condition where the patient is and the, what is the um, pregnancy stages and what is the prakruti and everything after assessing those things you can even use 
or we are restricted to some extent there is no harm in it you can use it but very clearly alone haritaki single haritaki or powder of haritaki or alone as a single drug it is not to be used in case of pregnancy that's what the intention of acharya is that's a very good point that you told sir when it is told for one particular ingredient to be avoided so that applies only to that when it is in a combination the and the pharmacology the chemistry the synergy changes entirely and so that is a triple is entirely different than haritaki in many ways and uh, the same thing i have observed in uh, in uh, viruta ahara uh, combinations i, I think in astanga radia commentary uh, sarvanga sundari commentary they also explain that if two ingredients are told to be awarded to with each other for example honey and ghee to be awarded with each other in in same quantities that applies to only honey and when you are taking honey and ghee only that does not mean that if you are using honey and ghee as in case of uh, saptamrita loha or in case of champrash or and many different rasanas it does not mean that everywhere you know honey and ghee should not be uh, used together so when they are telling one thing it should be taken only on the right context sir see they are very specific in their uh, understanding and very specific in conveying the things what they wanted to or what they meant for when they say it is, is don't take it honey and grita in a sama pramana very clearly they said it is only applies to that so even for uh, saptamrita loha i suggest to my patient to consume saptamrita loha with honey and this one but i very clearly suggest take half a spoon of honey with two spoons of grita add it to that then you take this thing so this is asama pramana asama pramana you can take it there is no controversy or there is no prohibition from the acharyas regarding this similarly whenever there is a, a particular drug or a thing has been explained to be avoided it entirely on that specific narration and specific condition it is said it is to be avoided it doesn't mean that a blanket where this yoga is there it should be avoided no it is not there when it is become a, a very it's very typically you can observe that a person's behavior when he is alone a same person's behavior when he is in group entirely differs so that is the same concept applies even to the drugs yes sir definitely and though it is little bit uh, we are digressing because you brought up the context of uh, where haritaki is not recommended let me quickly share the shloka this is from bhav prakasha contra indications for haritaki so in in that he says adva meaning one who who is walking for long distance probably who who does a uh, excessive exercise uh, for that it is uh, told uh, to be avoided uh, and interestingly they mention about this ati kinna kinna we would understand it as uh, depression probably in the depression one is like highly emaciated not taking anything body he is losing body weight probably it is told as not recommended sir yes definitely we have one condition wherein uh, it's a neurological one where a person doesn't like to eat anorexia nervosa we call it is condition so where usually the person will lose a lot of body tissues and becomes lean and thin so that is generated because of uh, kinnata or depression so in such type of uh, persons where where there is a kinnata leading to not interest in food and uh, body tissues are being depleting so in those uh, people Uh, it it is to be avoided yeah it, it is not so very recommended in a week who has uh, and who, who has done fasting or langana who has undergone langana chikitsa for a very long period of time in that only pitta dikha where pitta is too high there and even the garbhavati also comes into picture so uh, moving on to the next question uh, it, it is also told as varcho mur mutra vibandagna so it is it not only avyarista is not only useful in uh, vibanda uh, vibanda hara action is not only limited to the uh, intestines but it also it clears uh, difficulty in urination problem as well sir see there's a reason i said it's a, it's a totally a whole sort of combination peculiarly and specifically acting on the functions or the area of apanavata See, apana vata very clearly we say apano apana gatha basti medro ru gochara shukra artha va shakran mutra garba nishkramana kriya so very clearly on those areas only it is helping so typically it 
clears the apanavata and pressure also hence it is definitely supporting the clearing of the vibandha as well as mutra gatha or mutra there is any obstruction to the path of flow of your urine yes sir and uh, a question has come how long can avyarista be used does this, does it solve the problem of constipation if diet and lifestyle is changed uh, does it just do mala shodhana or does it have any nourishing action on the colon probably because it contains draksha so uh, has it any nourishing action definitely avyarista is not a nourishing type of uh, yoga it a cleansing type of yoga it cleanses the colon how long it should be taken uh, it depends it depends on the patient and the way they live and what they eat and their prakriti and um, the atmospheric condition everything holds good and even his body type and body mass everything counts but usually we are seen people using abhyarista 4 months 6 months without any complications so we can take it as a pratyaksha pramana that much time can be taken without any hesitation and of course time and now when it is our intervention is there and uh, when we look for the um, changes what we are looking for in the treatment protocol or the outcome if such results are seen then probably when the thing is achieved we can slowly withdraw the drugs or any yogas so even that abhyarist also but in a small dose abhyarist can be given for a longer time for regular bowel cleansing type of activity can we use thrivrut lehyam in case of ama when ama is present can we use thrivrut lehyam how do we select the formula based on ama see first we need to understand what is ama if it is ama present in the colon then we need to give ama pachana dravyas if it is ama present somewhere else already it has moved out of the costa then there is no meaning in giving ama pachana in that level that we can straight away go for the whatever the things are there clearing the gut for that purpose if we do it then we can drag the ama from other part of the body to the cleansed colon so we can select the drugs in such a way that we can do all these things second thing when there is ama whether thrivrut leha can be taken or not there is no such restriction that uh, there is a ama inside you should not give thrivrut leha thrivrut leha will definitely help to remove the vata as well as the stools and everything and the content of the bowel very neatly without causing any trouble or pain to the person that's why it's called as one of the important sukha virechana dravya helps to remove the things with sukha so it can be taken but once again it is a dose dependent what 5 grams or 10 grams or how much you give it that depends on the person's prakriti and even costa accordingly or the condition we can select it uh, i mean looking to that question my opinion is little bit controversial regarding ama uh, i mean in the western 1 to 3 year course i mean most of the uh, ayurveda schools in uh, us and europe and even in australia and all are 1 to 3 years and when the when they teach this ama concept they kind of extrapolate or uh, generalize ama concept into each and every disease so i mean i am of the opinion that if the mascharaka or masavagata in the ashtangradaya and, and all if for example if, if they mention about ama only in those conditions better we think about ama rather than worrying about ama in all diseases so what happens uh, i've seen the students is that uh, it kind of uh, misses the point of uh, doing the amshamsha kalpana looking into the doshas behind which are which are causing the underlying symptoms uh, so we miss doing that so uh, probably ama should be you know considered only when it is required sir no usually it is our intention and our duty to find out any ama present or not in any given case but once uh, in a given case we try to analyze and the patient complains and the or the history we take it and accordingly then it is almost it will be cleared whether we need to concentrate on his gut or whether uh, the disease has been uh, extended to all the other part of the body or ama is present even in the gut and it is also extended to dhatu level so all those things we need to understand if you feel there is a ama lakshanas like glani not interest in work heaviness or pain and such type of things accordingly in various joints or in kapha pradeshas so when such things are there then you can assess there is ama then depending upon the type of person body weight 
and the place and even the season we can go for amapachana with trikatu churna for 3 to 5 days initially that will initiate the agni inside it will first what we do we try to increase the pacha um, pachaka agni so once there is a pachaka agni is improved or pachaka pitta is improved automatically it improves the all other pittas in the body and in the form of that we know that pitta and agni is present in the form of the body and definitely it helps in uh, digestion so once that agni is stimulated it in turn stimulates the all other agnis in the body so our intention is to improve the agni once agni is improved automatically amapachana takes place and then uh, even the blockages if it is there in the shrotasas even that can be opened up by using those uh, dravyas with their repotency like pramati dravyas like trikatu and uh, vacha or even uh, maricha and vacha and such of drugs then afterwards when there is a proper snan and swedana then we can bring back the dosha as well as ama from the which has entered into the dhatus back to the kosta then we can remove them through the uh, proper uh, either either my form of ubhayato uh, bhagara or it may be from vamana or by virechana whichever the things are which is required for us or whichever the dosha which you are feeling it is a predominant and it is showing the lakshanas of kupita lakshanas so that type of things are to be assessed and then only we can go for the proper planning of removal of those things yes sir and related to that uh, students have asked in the us we are taught that avlehas and grutas etc are needed to be avoided in case of ama again to my point kind of generalization of ama into whole thing probably the idea there is that you know the lehas may contain jaggery and little bit of gruta probably that is uh, that is the intention so your comments on that sir i don't find such uh, practically that it should be avoided see very see clearly it is said when there is uh, we need to improve the agni we use gruta even in the rituals when we are performing we put agni even though when there is no agni also in order to improve the agni we will put gruta to that and we blow the air so that it catches the fire and once there is a little bit of fire if you put agni then it becomes a, a huge fire so it's it's, it's a very typically it happens even inside that's what the difference where when it is said that is gruta is once again a vichitra pratyarabdha dravya when compared to dugda both dugda and gruta both are having the similar type of rasa panchaka and qualities and everything but dugda is samana pratyarabdha whereas gruta is vichitra pratyarabdha hence because of that gruta it will improve the agni rather than suppressing it it acts as the agni vardaka deepaka so there is no hesitation there should not be any hesitation that that something it is going to not going to happen uh, we can uh, use it but still if you have any doubt you can go for 1 to 3 days with trikatu churna initially then followed by after that you can use any gruta no issues yeah too much gruta can put off agni has come in common uh, of course i mean too much of anything we have to any which way avoid we have to choose the dose the medicine everything as per the uh, you know as per the condition and uh, an another question uh, has come in arabic culture cinnamon is contra- contraindicated in pregnancy so probably the reason that they have written is it causes gallbladder contraction uh, i mean cinnamon is probably used during pregnancy very well sir and there is no i said there is no contradiction but why they say it is it is comparatively tikshna so in order to see in pregnancy most of the time we avoid the tikshna dravyas because it may stimulate the garbha kosha or the uterus to expel its content so in order to avoid those things it should be and even of course uh, cinnamon has a very typical effect of lekhana karma and the cinnamon is acting even in case of uh, what you call uh, one of the important drug even in prameha it acts again as to that so in so many conditions it is there and it is not the way it, uh, something the uh, nutritious supportive uh, thing given in case of pregnancy may probably because of its ushna guna and tikshna guna it is avoided yeah rightly said by you it's kind of a karshana drug probably in, that's why in western cultures cinnamon and honey is given as a weight loss uh, uh, remedy and uh, and the next question was that uh, so this uh, coming to the last point on avyarista in many cases uh, gomutra haritaki is explained to treat 
uh, in case of hypothyroidism or wherever there is ama as in case of ama vata and all gomutra haritaki is used when gomutra haritaki is not available can we use avyarista as a substitute can can it be used it cannot be a total substitute exact substitute it can be an alternative drug abhyarista but gomutra is gomutra and gomutra bhavita haritaki it is a typically a penetrative and a sharp drug and that is given in the case of gandamala or arbuda or something like that even to the hypothyroidism conditions it, it won't exactly match with the abhyarista abhyarista is a better other alternative cannot be exactly a substitute for the gomutra haritaki yeah uh, i mean coming to the last point on uh, that avuleha and grutha again there are many avulehas and grutas which are out and out ushnaviriya i mean they produce for example adraka grutha is ushnaviriya that's why generalization is uh, better avoided and moving on to the next topic in a new education policy is coming in india called as national education policy and under which ayurveda is getting introduced from primary school up to the high school and to the colleges ayurveda yoga naturopathy all together i i have seen that many us students us students of indian origin when they go and set up ayurveda treatment and they start treating with ayurveda they come across many other indians they up because they are in a community when other indians meet many other indian people also do not know in detail regarding ayurveda probably in india also it is the you know holy land in which you know ayurveda ex- existed and all i i still believe that large large portion of people we do not know they do not know anything about ayurveda and probably that hesitancy is sort of uh, you know preventing them from exploring ayurveda as a treatment and also lifestyle uh, you know lifestyle choices in, in case of cold and cough they will rather use something like amrutanjan or you know general uh, generic uh, out over the counter modern cough syrups rather than using an ayurvedic one because, because of again lack of public awareness so probably because of this uh, national education policy introducing ayurveda from primary school level uh, at least it will sow some seeds of ayurveda and yoga naturopathy information uh, into the common lives of indians see definitely basic education uh, from the primary school level if it is there and in that if you relate the information related with the yoga naturopathy ayurveda and these other things if it is imbibed definitely it will be there in their mind whether they will come to ayurveda whether do it, they do engineering or they go to some other field or faculty or that is it answer get different but they will have at least a basic exposure regarding ayurveda and these other things this is what the lacuna we are facing since uh, independence after the independence uh, properly whatever has to be given uh, credit to the, to the basic nature and even the culture of india and the traditions and the knowledge and uh, whatever we had something down the line it has been uh, taught to us and even uh, one or two generations now feel that we are very inferior as the indians and we uh, as the indians uh, we have um, no knowledge about the life or even the science and maths or whatever it is we feel that we are inferior on something from the west or something it is it is it's good and it is uh, the best and that incorporation at such uh, type of things mindset is so developed uh, among the indians if uh, this is so happened with my own uh, patient uh, she came to me with uh, a joint pain type of disease then we diagnosed it as amavata and i said that you are suffering from amavata she felt so bad then i asked what is the reason why you are feeling so bad she thought that she had been afflicted with such a disease which is a very old age disease you know what to do with this i don't know how come i got it then i explained that and then after that when i said for this disease in modern they called as rheumatoid arthritis or it can be correlated to that then afterwards i in her on her face a little bit uh, clarity and something like that when i asked her, do you know what is amavata she said no then do you know what is rheumatoid arthritis that also it is no but when i say amavata she felt very bad when i say it is rheumatoid arthritis she felt somewhat comfortable so it very clearly suggests that whatever said in english sounds good in india for two to three generations which are after 1950s or 40s so what to do uh, we have been taught in such a fashion or such a manner that we have been exposed in such a way 
so of course at least the next generation if in the national education policy these things are been incorporated then definitely the th things will change and it's a very good move from the government uh, like you rightly mentioned post independence after 1947 we still i mean though we have come 60 70 years after that we still suffer with that a colonial mindset uh, so, so to speak or western culture is higher than our indian native culture and and all and now it has also been, i i read the other day there are foreign channels like foreign people reacting to indian videos of song dance or indian movies and they will kind of analyze and kind of appreciate that and for that many indians are sitting and uh, you know and enjoying that so we still need western approval we still seek uh you know admiration from western people we do not appreciate ourselves uh, as a stand alone and you know swami vekananda has also said in one condition that you know wearing wearing suit and coat in hot and humid conditions of india where it is more appropriate to use in, sorry in the indian native dresses uh, we dis that and wear su suits and all so it doesn't make sense uh, probably the small steps like this uh, introducing indian cultures indian medicine system and all including yoga and all uh, will be uh, medicine is existing and if this is good then definitely in coming years and the coming days definitely there will be a, a very broad scope for the practice of ayurveda as well as uh, following the lifestyle and of course definitely people's lifestyle will increase and even the their life span will increase and they will understand their life in a very better manner otherwise they simply go on eating so whatever the thing in the water the way they want that they are that's the reason they are landing in trouble so all these things will definitely going to help us in future the next next generation will be benefited from this i have talked about this national education policy with many other ayurveda doctors and many people say that oh this this may cause more and more number of ayurveda doctors and you know we are already there are already many people and you know, it's already the community is crowded and all so the intention is not to you know prepare ayurveda doctors from childhood the inter, inter, uh, intention here is to introduce ayurveda and yoga and uh, other things of course they are not going to you know th they are going to be taught deep into the ayurveda systems and all the so basic uh, basic things about diet and lifestyle will be taught probably and you know i i hope that the educational a ministry personnel will take care of that it's more about uh, preparing students to adopt natural and healthy ways and avoiding junk foods and you know dangerous lifestyles like mobile mobile phone addiction and what not so probably that uh, policy will bring in such changes and adopt such thing for uh, maybe some short pictures or uh, short stories regarding uh, what is the importance of getting uh, early in the awake in the morning in the brahmi murta what is going to influence on the body and what is the importance of uh, brushing with these rebo herbs and what is the importance of uh, rutucharya what is the importance of swastha ahara and what is swastha vritta and what is the importance of these things they came they may come out with uh, short clips or short stories or even uh, some uh, highlighted points in a book in a chapters or something like that related with the health or uh, maintaining the health and all those things and uh, somewhat they'll say that even uh, this was there in india in the long ago when there was no other modern medicine or modern uh, modalities of understanding a disease was not there still at the time people were able to live happily and people were able to go with uh, treatments and these things were there and it was there in india so once they will feel that they will also feel proud about their culture and their basic things and definitely they will have a, their approach to understand to this system of medicine and as well as these doctors and as well as to treatment protocols their approach will definitely and definitely will going to change and their mindset will be definitely will be in a very supportive in future and then probably with all these things in some uh, occasion arises instead of going to a western doctor first they may approach a ayurvedic doctor in the first so that is the outcome what we can expect out of it yeah probably when they when they thought like this triflas and champlas the combinations uh, which are made or which are designed like 2000 3000 years before in the times of charakas and sushrutas the same triflas the same champlas and what not they work e equally and with the same efficacy even today probably they will uh, you know the indians will develop you know a huge amount of respect to the sciences that were there 
previously and it will also extrapolate into the other sciences you know uh, you know we have a lot of gems still uh, hidden in astrology you know ancient indian astrology chemistry metallurgy even using a chisel to uh, you know to make beautiful uh, sculptures and all that we see in indian temples we, we do not know how they were using all those things so all these hidden sciences even the ancient mathematics vedic mathematics and all so this will also gain strength like uh, like big rain brings shower, you know a small amount of drizzle to the nearby villages probably the other senses will also erupt and probably the indian ancient india will rise again definitely we, we previously that's what the, it is been said um, even the earlier times are colonial before the colonial time we were happily living without any problem but now once all these mindset have been created in such a way that that we need to have uh, typically that uh, mindset and that uh, mindset is causing a disturbance and a trouble at various levels so that's the better way of approaching is that the root cause to be targeted and that's what they are doing it and this root uh, cause will be a little bit corrected in the beginning then the next generation will definitely benefit out of it yeah, right you have said uh, there's a book called as a uh, how not to how not to die uh, it is written by an uh, you know allopathic doctor from uh, us he has done studies on you know comparative studies on cardiac disorders cholesterol levels obesity diabetes in india and these uh, southeast asian countries and he says that you know, they were doing very well now that in the last few decades the amount of cardiac disorders cholesterol obesity and cancer are increasing in these things because people are teaching the old traditional ayurvedic things and adopting burgers and pizzas definitely that's the reason we have been given all sort of uh, combinations which is very typically for the season and for time being for example during january 14th we have a one festival sankranti at that time people will be given that uh, til and uh, gud combination so very typically one is ushna one is uh, madhura and that is required at that time in a shishira ritu very typically this combination was given similarly next in april 15th around we have another uh, one uh, festival yugadi then once again there is such a combinations have been given like bevu and bella that is what the combination of neem and jaggery so which is very typical in controlling the kapha at that time similarly at the time of deepavali uh, there is a very typically they are suggested to each a certain type of sweets and as well as they are allowed us to go for a oil bath compulsion so all these are indicated towards the maintaining of the health so that they, that we need to give the importance and what is the science behind those uh, practices that definitely it is going to help us and reading through the comments and some some has written it's it's a little bit controversial ayurveda is the root and yoga is the fruit i mean you ayurveda and yoga cannot be say compared because yoga I mean, I, I'm trying, but it's a little bit controversial. So in YouTube, do not hate me for this. But yoga, primary thing of yoga, you know, why it originated and all is to prepare the whole of the body and mind in a spiritual path. The final uh, destination for yoga is to attain samadhi. So control the indri indriyas, control the sensations, mind go inward and go upward in the spiritual evolution, and finally lead to samadhi. probably ayurveda has spiritual elements but uh, before getting into the spiritual world you know we go into the dharma artha kama way live happily live healthily adopt healthy habits and treat diseases you, your thoughts sir definitely it is same uh, ayurveda is looking after those first three lines and only the moksha line is been taken care by the yoga and of course nowadays every disease we say that it is um, psychosomatic psychosomatic so that somatic component is taken by the ayurveda and the psycho part or the psychological part should be taken care by the yoga and that practices definitely meditation pranayama dhyana and all these things definitely will definitely uh, you know it going to help in a very very typically in a thing in such a manner that the people will be avoiding the conflicts and living happily yeah, of course there are many uh, you know yoga is considered as a medical science and 
medical uh, interventions with yoga practices and uh, naturopathy is blend, getting blended. That's also a welcome sign, sir. Yoga can also be for medical reasons as well. No, you see, it's um, anticipation or anticipating something or expecting something big or a small one is always um, okay. It's no you, no problem. But we need to be very practical in our approach. We have a like something like a short pistol or a gun with a simple one, and we want to kill a person, an enemy who is standing 15 kilometers away from us, which is not possible. For that, we need to adopt a proper weapon. Similarly, here also, we need to adopt a proper weapon for a particular type of condition. Yoga and the Ayurveda can go hand in hand, but they cannot simply substitute one another. They can go hand in hand and one will be taking care of the body, the other one will be taking care of the mind. So when both will go together, definitely it will be helpful. Yes, sir. And, uh... Uh, reading through the comments again, it will be a dream come true regarding national education policy. If if uh, can't wait for Ayurveda studies introduced into primary school, uh, Deepthi Suruji, she, she, I mean, uh, I mean, I have been in touch with her since ma many years now, and her primary struggle or her primary aim was to introduce Ayurveda into the primary schools of US. Uh, probably that dream will surely come true in uh, very quickly. And some somebody is right. If if you sow the seeds, sprouts will uh, arise. You know, in, in due course of time. Just a little bit of a last point for today. Probably how the China they have the Chinese tradition system of medicine. I'm not very aware of uh, the timeline, but probably in the 1900s. When this Chinese system of medicine was there and the Western system of medicine uh, was also uh, you know, gripping the whole world with this power of antibiotics and chemicals and whatnot. So they blended the Chinese medicine with the modern medicine and now both are considered equal and both are used together. Probably post-independence if we had done something like that, you know, merging Ayurveda and you know, considering best of the both worlds, bringing best of the both worlds and merging. That would have been beneficial, but now we are in a Ayurveda and Varapati, we are entirely seem to be in a different paths now. See, in India, we have been uh, since uh, independence, post independence, we are in a loggerheads between Ayurveda and Allopathy. We struggle a lot and we quarrel a lot, we never go in hand in hand. But the intention was if both were taken together as an integrated approach definitely would have been. of course here and there and there are certain occasions there are certain uh, situations they have made in a trial or approach uh, in an integrated manner to uh, cure the conditions or to manage the conditions but still it is a long way to go and that's the reason now the even uh, central government is also thinking that the integrated approach in the sense that under one roof all system of uh, medicines and the therapy should be available to the common man he can approach whatever the thing which is best suitable and of course some integration is also going on in such a way that uh, expert team will say that per particular uh, condition which treatment is best whether it is ayurveda best or whether it is allopathy best or whether it is homeopathy best for this whichever to be taken that they are in a due course of time I think that may come, the report may come soon. So after that, we may develop a certain type of protocols that what should be or which patient should be directed to which uh, type of system of medicines that will be a somewhat uh, a very clarity with the things and where we can treat and where can, we cannot. So all these things will come, of course, but it is a very long way to understand how that, uh, the effects of these uh, today's policies will be in future. Yeah, looking at overall, uh, the future of Ayurveda looks great and uh, we as Ayurveda practitioners across the world, we have a lot to contribute and achieve. Uh, so, thank you very much for a mind-blowing, uh, you know, and thought-provoking thought, thought -provoking, uh, session, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you. So that brings us to the end of the session. Thank you all for your active participation. See you in the next uh, session, uh, next Sunday, same time. Namaste all.